what do you mean by a dara karaka what is a dara karaka why do you need a dara karaka or why do you need to see the placement of a dara karaka in the chart we all know what's a dara karaka this is a jaimini concept jaimini astrology said that planet are having different responsibilities depending on their degrees so the planet with the least uh, degree is the dara karaka so people think that dara karaka is the significator of the spouse well not really yeah. it is see you have to understand that jaimini astrology is talking at uh, a very deeper level okay if you really want to see your spouse the spouse has to have a body right <laughs> that body is coming from three houses the second house seventh house eleventh house because these are the three houses which can bring that spouse in front of you it is not venus it is not dara karaka okay if your venus is in gemini it doesn't mean your spouse will be chatting all the time okay if your venus is in leo it doesn't mean that the spouse will be dominating no 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 never okay but you have to understand these houses show the physical body because the physical realm will be experienced through you only if these houses get activated so if you are talking of marriage or spouse or nature of spouse and all this you have to see which planets are in the second seventh and eleventh or the planets lording these houses so do not use tara karaka to see the nature of your spouse it just doesn't work it's your nature okay so tara karaka see tara karaka is a gemini concept so it's talking of things at a soul level what does it mean when you say this planet is a dara karaka for this person okay for example any planet with the least degree so it means that now when i talk of degrees you, i mean within that zodiac sign if you are new to astrology then every planet is in a uh, particular zodiac sign and they are in different degrees okay so to the extent a planet is in a higher degree it means to that extent you have experienced those traits yourself so therefore a planet with the highest degree is known as the atma karaka atma karaka is that which binds the soul which means these are the traits and experiences and life events which uh, which has impacted you so strongly that you identify the most with them anything which goes right can elevate you in context of your atma karaka or anything that goes wrong in context of your atma karaka can really wreak havoc in your life overall life okay but what does it mean to say that i have a dara karaka now dara karaka is the planet with the least degree what does it mean least it means these are the things which see you you have to understand what is the meaning of least degree least degree doesn't mean you have not experienced it doesn't mean that okay least degree means that somebody who is directly opposite to you is making you experience all this you are not experiencing yourself but that person is making you experience okay or somebody is causing those experiences it's like atma karaka is like saying okay i will go and eat this piece of cake but dara karaka is like your friend or your spouse comes and tells you hey i think this cake is nice you should taste it and then you are like oh yeah maybe i can try or maybe i hate cakes right or maybe oh i love cakes thank you for recommending this piece of cake to me <laughs> so that's exactly what is the dara karaka dara karaka represents from many 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 lifetimes what are the things that have been imprinted by your spouse or your spouses <laughs> from many 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 lifetimes that have been imprinted to your soul okay these are the experiences which they have come and given you so it can happen that if mercury is your dara karaka it can happen that 
your spouse now you may say that oh mercury uh, is my darka so be my, maybe my spouse was very talkative you know or maybe that uh, my spouse was uh, very much uh, or not was i would say will be uh, very much uh, tech savvy or concerned with finances not really what is happening is because that person is that planet is the darka so what is happening is you are fully experiencing that planet through this person okay it doesn't necessarily mean that they are mercury it means that you are experiencing the aspect of mercury to the fullest when you are with that person which means you would prefer to experience that with somebody else should i repeat whichever planet is your dara karaka you will always prefer to experience those traits with somebody else from somebody through somebody not directly that is where the dara karaka comes in so therefore the dara karaka is very important because it tells you what at a soul level what is that which you are trying to fulfill within yourself through others now when you hear this many people will be outraged because these days social media is flooded with these uh, fancy illusions fake things that oh you are a complete whole within yourself you know you don't need anybody you are all powerful you are all strong you are all good you are this you are that blah 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 but yet you are miserable right so social media youtube says you do not need anybody to complete you you are all powerful you are independent in yourself but that is not what the scriptures say there is only one person in this world who is independent who doesn't need anybody who is that ियलियल but you will have some dependency on someone okay only a perfect yogi a mahajan can claim to be independent not because he or she is independent but they are in contact with somebody who is lord vishnu who is fully independent okay only then can somebody claim but for the general public the materialistic people who are suffering in this world they cannot be independent so when you say that this person has this planet as the darakaka it means that this person prefer this person can experience that alone no problem but it means that this person wants to experience that by staying together with somebody okay so therefore you will see that if uh, i have seen always in charts if your fifth lord or venus is the darakaka fifth lord of your lagna chart rashi chart becomes your darakaka or venus is your darka then what happens you prefer to experience venusian traits with your spouse now this is like uh this is understood right because venus itself represents your spouse so you'll be like okay that's pretty obvious but what does it mean it means that suppose you are not very creative which which doesn't mean you do not have creativity but you do not express your creativity okay venus is creativity and charm and you know uh cosmetics beauty and all these taking uh showing things more than what they are actually that's venus all right uh if venus or fifth lord which shows your creativity becomes your atma god and that means you may not want to dress up when you are alone but when you are with your spouse you will be like oh my god what's happening everybody else will be like wow when you are alone you just dress normally but when you are with your spouse you are like dressing as if uh, <laughs> i hope you understood what i mean to say here now this is an example of how you are experiencing that venusian trait or that trait of creativity which is the fifth lord through the darakana so therefore 
you must check which house is the Dharakaraka is ruling. If it is sun and moon, it will rule only one house. Okay. Uh, sun or moon, I mean. And if it is uh, any other plant, then it will rule two houses. Okay. So therefore, once you know the Dharakaraka's lordships, then you check where he is placed. Okay. And then you check the sign. The sign will tell you to what extent are you aware. So for example, if Mercury is your Dharakaraka, but now say Mercury is in debility in Pisces. So this means you experience, you prefer to experience Mercurian traits through your spouse, but then uh, it's in debility. So there's confusion. What could I do? <laughs> That's what like saying a debilitated Dharakaraka does. Okay. Now, suppose your Dharakaraka is debilitated or it's in a reasonable good dignity or a bad dignity or average anywhere, but it is afflicted. Afflicted Dharakaraka, what does it mean? It means, so suppose if Mercury is afflicted by Saturn Rahu Ketu and Mercury is your Dharakaraka. So what it means? It means you want to experience Mercurial traits like you, when you are with your spouse, your communication improves, not necessarily that it improves, but you are aware certainly that yes, I need to talk and I need to communicate. But then there is an affliction. What does it mean? It means that there is an obstruction. Affliction means there is another party who is attacking you which is preventing you from experiencing that. So if Mercury is afflicted by Mars as the Dharakar, then it could happen that the moment you try to communicate with your spouse, there is burst of anger within you because this is your turn. So this will happen inside you, not your spouse. Saturn. Oh, the communication is not going anywhere. It's like, you are just arguing on some baseless facts, claiming them to be right, because you think they are right, okay? So therefore, the Dharakaraka is very important, okay? So do not use the Dharakaraka as the significator of your spouse. Use it to see what is that which I feel that I need to experience with my spouse, okay? So therefore, it is very important that you check the Dharakaraka when you are doing uh, compatibility readings or when you are doing uh, consultations for married life, okay? Because if you can give, if, if suppose a person has a particular Dharakaraka, suppose a person has, you know, uh, Jupiter as the Dharakaraka, okay? And this is a man's chart. Then there is another lady's chart which is coming for compatibility matching. Gun Milan, Kunli Milan, whatever. Or modern day, uh, like in the West, it's, you know, uh, post relationship compatibility. They are in a relationship and then they are wondering endlessly, will this lead to marriage? Okay. So once uh, when I was in Germany, there was a German girl. She came and she told me, oh, what you Indians, you know, you are doing this, you know, matchmaking. How foolish that is, you know, to match things. <laughs> you should be natural. You should be just, you know, going with the flow and you know, you should do uh, that which you like, you know. Why to go by all this point system? You know, we Europeans are very smart. You know, we do not go by all this. You know. I said, uh, I would like to disagree here because I have many clients from India and Europe and US who do this matching. But well, there's only one difference. Indians do it before getting into a relationship and the West. So anyway, the thing is, if the man has Jupiter as the Dharaka, and then you have this lady's chart, and then this lady's chart comes to you. So then you have to check what is the level of awareness of Jupiter and the ninth floor in this lady's chart because this man wants to experience this trait of Jupiter through this lady. Is the lady intuitive or connected with some spiritual path tradition? 
then the spiritual life of this man will skyrocket once he marries. Otherwise, uh, if the lady is more Venusian, if the lady thinks that materialistic pleasure is the end goal of life, then this marriage will end up in a divorce. Because, now, it may not externally end up in a divorce. If the sixth house is involved, then the divorce happens. But suppose the sixth house is not involved in the dasha of this man. And this lady is primarily Venusian compared to Jupiter, Jupiterian. Then they will be just staying officially, but there will be no connection. Okay, The soul level connection cannot be there. And similarly, you have to see in this lady's chart, what is that she wants to fulfill through somebody else? And is that man providing that to her? Okay. If he's able to provide, then it's good. If he's not, then uh, that's serious trouble. Okay. Because when a planet is Dalakaraka, you do not feel like experiencing it alone. So that area of life will always be missing for you. Okay. All right, so this this can be a very long video with all the pros and cons, okay? But this is what I wanted to speak on Dharakaraka. So don't think that Dharakaraka means, you know, oh, uh, Jupiter is my Dharakaraka, so I will never uh, have spiritual progress without marriage. No, it's not like this. But if you are married, you pray, if Jupiter is your Dharakaraka, or suppose your ninth lord is your Dharakaraka, then you, you might prefer to do spiritual practices by uh, staying with your spouse in your home. Something similar, okay. Or if the third lord and the ninth lord are involved, then you might like to travel to different holy places with your spouse. So, it's a whole lot of an analysis, okay, to put to one video. But this is a food for thought for you. So that you can start thinking on in the right direction, rather than just saying, oh, Venus is your dark, dark you know. Your spouse will be very attractive. She will be this, she will be that. Okay. That doesn't work. Okay. There you go. That will be all for my side. God is there with you all the time. Just look to him and you'll find him. If you're new to the channel, then please subscribe to it below. And if you want a consultation from me, the website for my, uh, the link for my website is down in the description section. All right. Thank you very much.